the Alpine Shire is in the northeast of Victoria and uh, Council is based out of a small town called Bright. Uh, today I'm going to talk about a web-based emergency management system called Mech Central that we had developed in conjunction with uh, partners DataLink, who are a web services company based out of Melbourne. <coughs> There's three parts. I'll give you an overview of the operation of the MEC within the Alpine Shire. Then I want to talk about the process of having the software developed. And of course, at the end, I'll give you some screenshots of the product itself. Okay, the MEC's been activated in the Alpine Shire three times. Uh, once in 2003, um, 2006, and then of course, after the Black Saturday fires in 2009. In 2003, the MEC was uh, established after a dry storm came through and started fires around the area. Um, so the MEC was only actually established well into the crisis itself. As you can see there, it went for 13 days 24-7. And because it was quite new, it's characterised by a large amount of anxiety, both within Council and in the community. In fact, um, operations at the Council ground to a halt for the, the entire time. A couple of shots from 2003. And for those who know, that's uh, Falls Creek, which is a ski village up the mountain. In 2006, the MEC was established after Mount Buffalo was on fire, then a suspicious fire started near Tawonga Gap. And uh, this time, the MEC was established uh, early into the crisis and went for 22 days, 24-7. Uh, and there were many of the same people in 2006 that were there in 2003. Um, there was less anxiety amongst the staff, amongst the community, and council operations actually continued. We used technology more in 2006, primarily GIS <coughs> systems, and we started some data sharing, informal data sharing between the DSC and the MEC. And if uh, those of you know the area, that's the Tonga Gap fire after about 24 hours. Elvis, <coughs> taking water out of the dam at Melbourne. <coughs> Just to give you an idea, that's uh, it's December and that's 4pm, so it's, the smoke's pretty oppressive. In 2009, of course you're all uh, familiar with this, the MIC operated 8 days, 24 hours. <coughs> um, we actually used our web-based emergency management system during this emergency. Um, and each emergency was slightly different, and what characterised this one from, from what I noticed was that the MEC was more decentralised, and I guess the solution aided that, but also there was much more attention in the relief centres, more focus in the relief centres. The other thing we did in October of 2008, so just prior to uh, the 2009 bushfires, we actually ran this training exercise, which you can see here. It was a uh, crisis-based training exercise. This was on a flood event. And as you can see, we've got the police involved, the SES, all the agencies that were involved in the 2003 and 2006 bushfires. We've also done um, training using the emergency management system just for our own um, non mech emergencies like significant storm events. It's a shot from the 2009 fires on the front line. What you're looking at here is an extract from the actual spreadsheet used in 2006 by the MEC. Um, it records the request and events that come into the MEC, um, who they're actioned by, the actions that were taken. The MERC, which is the Emergency Management Controller, was very clear in both of those emergencies that all the agencies and all the staff need to keep a log of what they do during the MEC operation. So this, this is a log of the requests. Okay, just talk about the project. It began after 2003. Our Miro at the time saw the opportunity to do things better and he applied to Emergency Management Australia <coughs> for some funding. We received $45,000. And we broke the project up into two areas. One was to establish data sharing agreements between agencies in the Alpine Shire. And that was based on our experience of uh, informal data sharing occurring with the DSC. 
And the second part was to develop a request or an event management system. Initially, we partnered with uh, GIS consultant Julia Mitchell Morrison, who went about uh, contacting the agencies and establishing these data sharing agreements. And then in 2007, I met um, a gentleman called Scott Davey here at this conference, actually. Um, and he proposed the use of Web2 technologies to provide a solution for this. And so he ended up engaging DataLink to help us develop this system. The initial requirements, excuse me for a sec, we wanted it to be easy to use. One of the things that characterises um, an emergency management system is it doesn't get used very much. It might not be used for a few months or even a few years. So when people come to use it, you're going to have new people using it or people won't be familiar with it. So it needs to almost be intuitive, require no training. So that was one of our requirements. We wanted GIS integration. We wanted to be able to spatially locate requests and events. Speed this up. Um, and also, we wanted a place to be able to record logs, the agency logs. We'll keep moving here. Development occurred in four, four phases. We did a proof of concept, <coughs> then we built a product and tested it with a few key stakeholders, that being the police and the SES. Then we ran that training event that you saw, where we activated the whole MEC, did a scenario <coughs> with training, and then the fourth phase, we incorporated that feedback into the product itself. There is actually some current development going on. After the 2009 emergency, we did a debrief, and we've jointly funded some further development um, back into the product. It's due to be released in a couple of weeks. We call it MEC Central 2.0. Okay, a quick look at the product itself. <coughs> As you can see, we're on the Event Manager tab. It has a Google map showing on the front page, a list of events currently sorted by the last time it was updated. On the left-hand side, we have a list of agencies showing the number of open events they have assigned to them. There's a basic workflow in the system, very simple. A request comes in, it can only be assigned to an agency by the MERC, in this case the police. Then the agency acts upon it. They can resolve it, and then again it's closed by the police. This next screen just shows simple um, entry screen of adding a new request or event. It has a title, a status, a priority, and we can assign it to an agency again only the Merck can assign it to an agency. Hasn't got many fields, the idea being all the details of the call, all the details of the request are done in text in the text entry field here. So we tried to keep the number of fields down. You'll see in this area just here, that's an area that the Merck is notified if there are events waiting to be assigned to agencies or if there are events waiting to be closed. Next screen shows uh, a dashboard. Just introduce the concept of a, of a workspace. Each agency has an area in the system where they can record what they do, their logs, their telephone numbers. Um, and that workspace is private to them. So we wanted an area where you could come along as in the public gallery and have a look at a summary of what was going on. And that's this dashboard. Essentially, it shows a summary of everything that's occurring in the MEC. There is what you can't see here, a projector view. We hit a button, it takes all the boundaries off and produces a view for uh, projection onto the screen. Um, I won't go into it more, but there's a summary, there's a dashboard. Again, this is a workspace. In this case, a uh, police workspace. You can see I've circled what says the police log. It's just a wiki. You, you'd be familiar with wikis. You can create wikis to do anything you want within the system. Pages, just areas to store information and add comments to it. Just moving along. We have a policies and documents area where we store our emergency management <coughs> plans, where we store our operation procedures, where we store our phone trees, where we store the maps as they come through, where we store other documents associated to the emergency. And again, a simple SMS system. Type a message, hit enter, and it sends a message out to everybody subscribed to the system. Okay. One of the key benefits of the system, I will 
go on with this one, is that uh, we had to give a report, as many of you did, to the Royal Commission. Um, this is one page of a 135 page report. It shows one particular event, it's time and date stamp, all the actions, they can see the workflow through it, and again, it has a unique uh, ID and title. Just quickly, because this is an IT conference, the system is back-ended by a content management system called Freestyle, and I'm just showing you a shot here um, of the Freestyle, it's in preview mode. What it allows you to do is to do simple customizations and modify the security model in behind it without needing to go back to the developer. Here's another shot just showing you in the edit mode. Keep moving. 2.0, which is being developed now um, and due in a couple of, um, couple of weeks, adds some additional major features. One of them is to be able to record and track resources. We want workflow within the agencies. We want to be able to have multiple emergencies in there. Typically, we'll get a storm event, and we want to be able to start with that storm event or start with that emergency, and only after a certain period of time will the MEC be activated, and we might want to be able to uh, bring those together later or run them separately. So we want to be able to have multiple emergencies. We want to add map annotations, road closures, fire boundaries, vulnerable clients and the like. And we want to be able to share information between this system and one of our neighbouring shires. And we'll do that using authenticated GeoRSS feeds. Okay. My last slide, the key success factors. There was a need, we identified it. We have a good relationship with the software developer. The project ownership, in this case, it could have been the business, but um, we picked it up in IT and ran with it over the three years, so we owned it. We involved key people early, primarily the police and the SES. We seek their feedback, we incorporate it into the product, and we ran scenario-based training exercises.